Eight years ago I reviewed the first MyTech Brooklyn DAC. Still based on this DAC, the current Brooklyn Bridge 2 has added quite some functionality. A Rune server, Rune endpoint and more. The design, both physical and electronic, is still based on the initial design. Physical, the only obvious difference is the touch screen instead of the physically split screen that appear to be prone to wearing. And on the rear, the connections are located differently. Electronically, a lot has changed too, I'll come back to that later on. But it is important to mention that now an Intel i5 based Rune server is integrated and, of course, it can function as a Rune endpoint too. Let's see how it is to be used. I will use the name Brooklyn in this video for the Brooklyn Bridge 2. The analog outputs of the DAC need to be connected to matching inputs on the amplifier over either RCA or XLR cables. The amp obviously needs to be connected to a pair of loudspeakers. The Ethernet connector on the Brooklyn needs to be connected to your router over a network cable unless you use Wi-Fi. Especially when you want to use the Brooklyn as a server and use more room endpoints, a cable connection is more reliable. Over the router the Brooklyn can connect to the room mothership, internet radio and streaming services. If you have a computer or NAS holding your music files, that music can be played over the network too. Rune inside the Brooklyn is controlled using a smartphone, tablet or computer. If you still use a CD player, that can be connected using a pair of analog RCAs or a Toslink or SPDIF cable. If you don't use the Toslink input for the CD player, you can connect the digital audio output of your TV to it. Alternatively, it, you could use the analog output of the TV to the analog line inputs. There even is a phono input suited for moving magnet cartridges. If you use the analog inputs, it is good to know that the signal will stay analog. As said, the outside looks identical to earlier versions. The black or silver aluminium front has this special MITEC structure. The case is made entirely of metal, has many small holes on top and on the sides and is always grey. It measures 216 by 225 by 44 mm and weighs 3 kilos. On the front right we see the rotary encoder that functions as a volume control when turned and as a mute button when pressed and as a power button when pressed long. In the middle the new full color touchscreen where the transport functions and the menus are controlled and the music playing is shown. On the left side two headphone outputs capable of delivering 500 milliamps 6 watts. When used over a 2 jack to 1 4 pin XLR it drives one pair of headphones in balance mode. The colored M shows the power status of the Brooklyn. The color and the brightness are adjustable. On the left there is a small hole with behind it a reset button for the integrated computer. Next to it the IEC mains inlet that, although having a linear power supply, accepts any AC voltage between 90 and 240 volts, 50 or 60 Hz. The trigger output can switch on a power amp with trigger input. Then the 1 GB Ethernet port with above it the sockets for the supplied Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. Two USB 3 ports let you connect USB drives for music storage and backup of Rune database files. Then we get to the digital input starting with a USB B connector that accepts USB audio class 2 audio files, usually coming from a computer. Then the optical Toslink input and two SPDIF inputs. Then we get to the analog I.O. First the left and right balanced outputs, the ground terminal for the phono input and the single ended outputs. Then the analog inputs, line level, often called AUX and phono, suited for moving magnet cartridges. As you can see the Brooklyn is packed. There is a 90 watt toroidal transformer and a capacitor bank as part of the linear power supply. 
There are separate windings and electronics to feed the audio and the computer. The Core i5 based computer board can be found here. The CPU is connected to a cooling element plus a fan over this heat pipe. The ES9028 Pro based DAC chip with Mitech's own filtering and harmonic audio tuning is on the lower circuit board. Since Jurovic told me that hasn't really changed from the earlier incarnation, I didn't feel like taking it all apart. Like all ESS equipped DACs, the Brooklyn offers six filters, but these are not the standard filters. The Brooklyn uses its own and also has the MQA appodizing filter, which by the way is my favourite. It also has Mitex HAT, short for Harmonic Audio Tuning. This was first introduced in Mitex flagship model. In the Brooklyn it has two positions, normal and warm. There are two ways to use it with Rune, as an endpoint or as a Rune server and endpoint. This has to be set in the setup menu. If you use it as a Rune endpoint you need a separate computer to run Rune server on. Choosing to run Rune server on the Brooklyn will almost always make more sense for then you only have to add a storage medium holding music and you're ready. That can be a USB drive connected to the Brooklyn, a share on a NAS or computer or, although limited in capacity, the internal drive. I used the Brooklyn in Rune server mode and linked it to my small Synology DS119J NAS that has an 8TB hard disk mounted on that and it is loaded with music. Rune started to index the music analyzes the loudness of each track and completed the metadata, which took a few hours. I also logged into both the Tidal and Cobus streaming services. After that the home screen of Rune showed that the works of 4685 artists was indexed on 11248 albums split up into 162205 tracks. Despite the large catalogue Rune feels fast as you can see. Let's group these two Adrian Cowley albums and see if they are indeed different. Ah, the second one only has one track. The first album has 11 tracks while the second album only has track 2 and thus can be erased. It all works swift. Playback to many endpoints isn't a problem either. During the test I had the Brooklyn and the Grim Audio grouped for easy comparison. And that now has music playing. Let's start Alan Parsons album Eve on the Eversolo DMP A8. Now to make it a bit more difficult let's play a DSD track on the Magna Mano streamer. So I focus on DSF to list only the DSD albums. And select LD Miola's Consequence of Chaos and start that. It's still playing perfectly. So let's have the CPU work even harder and play a DSD to a Google Home speaker. Since that only plays PCM, Rune has to convert this DSF track to PCM. And still no hiccups. There will be limitations if you want to do a lot of DSP like converting PCM to DSD, convolution for room correction and so on combined with such a large catalogue. Then a separate Core i7 red server might be needed. But for most music lovers the Rune server is more than needed. Playing music using Rune can be controlled fully from a smartphone, tablet or computer as remote control. If you want to use the Brooklyn with other sources, analog or digital, you need to use the touch screen. Let's first look at the Rune functionality. Tapping Rune shows the music playing. Tap there and you get a full screen with the now playing info. Here you can play pause and skip the playing music and set random play and repeat. Go back and select preamp and you can select either USB or other inputs. After selecting the latter, 
all inputs are selectable. You can alternatively use an optional Apple remote control, but given the fact that the characters on the screen prevent reading at more than an arm's length, that's hardly more convenient. The Brooklyn was connected to the Air Acoustics AX520 over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The amp drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio OVA 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The network connection comes from the Zixel GS1900-10HP switch over the Network Acoustics Eno system. CAT6 patch cables connect the Zixel to the Ziggo business modem and switch and to the TP-Link Deco M4 Wi-Fi mesh network. A fiber connection connects to the Netgear ProSafe GS418 TPP switch on the third floor where the Synology DS119J NAS is connected. An iPad Pro 2 was used to control room. The equipment was placed in the Creative Trend 3-3 rack and the amp and the Brooklyn were placed on stack audio over equipment isolators. Like all Brooklyns, this Brooklyn Bridge 2 is not a typical sounding low bit converter or ES1938 Pro DAC. Not that it sounds like a ladder converter either. It also depends on the filter setting and head mode. After some evaluation I chose the MQA appetizing filter with the hat on normal. It is warmer, more evolving than 1938 Pro DACs normally do. But that doesn't mean that it has a lower resolution, especially deep lows have good texture. Sibilance is well controlled too. The stereo image is fairly wide and deep with the instruments and voices well in focus. The sound is clearly less clinical than the Chord Hugo for instance. And I like the musicality better than that of the Ferrum Wandler. The analog preamp is of matching sound quality. I didn't listen to the phono input, I'm a digital audio guy. The Brooklyn is a complex product to place. The fact that it is a streamer, DAC and server in one means that there is central clocking which is an expensive option with a separate server, streamer and DAC. Of course having a Core i5 computer so close to analog electronics is a challenge but I haven't heard any issues indicating problems in that area. When we look at the practical side of things, that one small box is all that is needed apart from a power amp and speakers or even more compact active speakers. When compared to my setup 1B, the Magnum Mano Ultra MK3 Farad streamer, the Holo Audio Cyan 2 DAC and the Sonic Transporter i7, you are only 400 euros of the price of the Brooklyn, which is 49.95. And then we could have a discussion on what DAC you prefer. I love them both. By the way, Mytek offers their Class D amp for 1000 euros when ordered with the Brooklyn. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. There will be a new video next week, so subscribe to this channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram to stay informed on when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumbs up or a link to this video on the social media, it is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen. Thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.